Today, I'm going to talk about a zombie movie from 2016 called, The Girl with All the Gifts. The story begins with a girl named Melanie waking up in her cell as the lights come on. She gets up and gets ready for school. Two soldiers enter, and Melanie greets them cheerfully, but they only focus on securing her to a wheelchair. They wheel her into the hallway, lining her up with other kids like her. The children are taken to a classroom and seated according to their numbers. Melanie asks the teacher, Ms. Justino, to tell them a story and suggests reading a myth so it can count as history. The teacher reluctantly agrees and reads them the myth of Pandora's box. After class, Melanie is taken back to her cell, where the grumpy soldiers refuse to say goodnight to her. Later, Melanie is given dinner, which is a plate full of worms. She eats and falls asleep. The next day, Dr. Caldwell visits Melanie. Melanie has solved a riddle the doctor gave her, so the doctor gives her a new one, explaining it's a logic problem. She asks Melanie to solve the problem of Schrodinger's cat. When Melanie can't answer, the doctor writes something down about her behavior and reads it back to her, calling her a subject. Finally, the doctor asks Melanie for a number, and she replies with 13. Later, the soldiers pick up Melanie and the other children for school again. As Melanie is wheeled past the numbered cells, she notices that cell number 13 is still closed. When she arrives in the classroom, the seat for number 13 is empty. The teacher assigns a writing task, and the children worry about not knowing what story to tell. When the teacher asks if anyone wants to read their story aloud, Melanie eagerly raises her hand. Her story portrays herself as the savior and hero. The teacher is deeply moved by Melanie's story and approaches her, wanting to touch her. Suddenly, Sergeant Parks bursts into the classroom and yells that touching the children is forbidden. To remind Ms. Justino why this rule exists, he approaches one of the children and rolls up his sleeve, bringing his arm close to the child. The child sniffs him, then unhinges its jaw, trying to bite him. The other children mimic the same behavior. After class, Sergeant Parks goes to Melanie's cell while others are about to remove her restraints. Melanie antagonizes him, so he leaves her tied to the chair. That night, Ms. Justino visits Melanie. When she sees Melanie still restrained, she enters the cell to release her. As soon as Melanie catches the teacher's scent, she starts acting like the other children. Before fully turning, Melanie tells the teacher to get out. Later that night, Dr. Caldwell visits Melanie again. They chat, and the doctor asks her for another number. Melanie replies with the number 4, which is her cell number. The next morning, Sergeant Parks arrives to get Melanie. He takes her out of the cell and into an elevator. As they leave the facility, gunshots ring out all around. Soldiers are running and shooting toward the fence of the military complex. Melanie is confused by the chaos as Parks wheels her to another part of the complex and into a laboratory where Dr. Caldwell is waiting. Dr. Caldwell asks Melanie about Schrodinger's cat again. When Melanie doesn't give the expected answer, the doctor explains that the cat in the box is both alive and dead at the same time. Another doctor injects medicine into her arm, making her fall asleep fast. They put her on a table and tie her down, but she wakes up quickly. Justino rushes in to stop the doctor from hurting Melanie. After some convincing, Melanie gets the teacher to put down her weapon, but then Melanie sprays pepper spray on her, making her unable to move so the soldiers can take her away. Melanie explains to the teacher that they're not just hurting Melanie, but using her to make medicine. Justino is taken away, and alarms start going off. Caldwell tells the other doctor to close the windows, but a zombie breaks through, biting her a lot Caldwell kills the zombies but hurts her hand in the process. The other doctor starts to change into a zombie, but she manages to run away from the lab just in time. Melanie is alone in the lab with the zombie, but it doesn't try to hurt her. She grabs a scalpel and sets herself free from the ties. Melanie goes outside and sees total chaos. Zombies are attacking soldiers, and the soldiers are trying to fight them off. Then, she spots Justino being attacked by the soldiers. Furious, Melanie rushes towards them and attacks, biting and eventually killing both soldiers before collapsing. Justino wakes up to find Melanie next to her, so she carries her into a military vehicle. The zombies take over the complex as they drive away, followed by a group of them. After a while, the vehicle stops in the middle of nowhere. Parks and Kieran realize Melanie is in the back with them. Justino lets Melanie out, but Caldwell protests, saying it's not her decision. Melanie runs a short distance away from the vehicle and stops, taking in the outside world for the first time. 
The rest of the group stays near the vehicle, trying to contact Dweather Outpost without success. The doctor insists they need to get her test subject back. Parks, Kieran, and Caldwell search the vehicle for supplies but find nothing except a mask used for handling zombies. The sergeant decides they should head south towards Beacon, assuming everyone else at the complex is dead, except for the zombie kids. They put Melanie in the gunner's seat of the vehicle, strapped in and wearing the mask, and head towards a river to find water. When they get there, a few zombies spot them, and a fight breaks out. One of the soldiers gets bitten, so Parks waits to see if he turns into a zombie. When he does, Parks shoots him. Closing the vehicle doors, Parks gets anxious when he sees Justino brought Melanie along. Melanie asks about the zombies, and Caldwell explains they were once people infected by a fungus spread through biting. When Parks tries to start the vehicle, he realizes it's broken. They'll have to walk through London, a faster but riskier route. Parks and Kieran check out the area they need to cross. It's swarming with zombies. They tell the others they have no choice but to go through the zombies and find shelter and supplies once they're in the city. The group quietly walks through a bunch of sleeping zombies, being careful not to wake them up. Suddenly, Parks halts when they reach a dead end. A zombie mom pushes a baby carriage toward them, and Caldwell approaches her to make her stop. She notices the baby moving in the carriage, but when she checks, it turns out to be just a rat. Caldwell yells in surprise, waking up the zombie mom and the others. The group barely manages to get away and navigates through the streets filled with zombies, finally stumbling upon an empty hospital where they take refuge inside. Parks discovers a way to get to another floor, where they'll be safer. Parks, Justino, and Kieran start patrolling while Caldwell and Melanie stay behind. While alone, Melanie asks where she came from. Caldwell explains that Melanie and others like her were discovered in a maternity ward at a hospital. Their mothers got infected with the fungus while they were pregnant so the infection passed to them through the placenta. Caldwell tells Melanie that they were different from other zombies, able to think and react almost like real people. Later, Justino returns, bringing Melanie some new clothes she found and apologizing for not finding any food. That night, Parks and Justino have a conversation about Melanie, and Parks tells Justino that Melanie cares for her. Meanwhile, Kieran is on guard duty with Melanie and they start to bond. The next morning, they see that more zombies have gathered outside the hospital. They're trapped, but Melanie comes up with a plan. Since the zombies don't attack her, she suggests going outside to try to lead them away from the building. Caldwell isn't keen on the plan, but with no other options, the rest of the group agrees. Before heading out, Melanie changes into her new clothes. She ventures outside and walks past the zombies without any issues. Soon, she spots a cat, catches it, and eats it raw. Then, she enters a house and finds a small dog. When she returns, she uses the dog as a distraction to lure the zombies away from the hospital. Parks puts the mask and handcuffs back on Melanie, and they continue their journey through the deserted city, aiming for Beacon. Along the way, they notice something odd, the fungus growing out of the zombies' bodies, which the doctor believes is the next stage in the fungus's life cycle. She explains to Melanie that in her case, the fungus acts more like a helpful partner than a harmful invader like in others. As they delve deeper into the city, they stumble upon a massive mass of bodies intertwined with fungus. Caldwell suspects this might be why there aren't many walking zombies around. When enough infected individuals gather, they transform into the mature stage of the fungus, capable of spreading over larger areas, possibly even the whole world. Suddenly, they come across a laboratory on their journey. They enter the vehicle and begin searching through it. Parks checks the engine and then tries the radio, but there's no response. Kira goes out on a supply run, leaving Melanie feeling uneasy, as if she's on the brink of turning. She tells them she needs to eat too, and they agree to let her out to hunt. Melanie hears a strange noise and follows it to a bookstore. Peeking inside, she sees a group of children communicating with grunts. Melanie realizes they are like her. Suddenly, one of the children comes inside and alerts the others that he has caught a whiff of something. Back at the mobile lab, Caldwell's condition worsens, and she tells Justino she has sepsis. She then brings up Melanie again, explaining that they need her brain and spine for the vaccine. Suddenly, Melanie returns and informs them about the children she saw, worried they might go after Kira. Meanwhile, Kira is seen walking down a street and discovers unopened cans on the ground, leading him to a store. Once inside, he begins eating and flipping through magazines. 
A little girl startles Kira from behind, luring him between the store's rafters, where more children appear. Their leader joins them, and together they attack Kira. Meanwhile, Melanie leads Parks and Justino to Kira, using her heightened sense of smell like the other children did. They reach the store and find Kira badly injured. Melanie realizes the children didn't just set a trap for Kira, but for them too. They go outside and confirm Melanie's suspicion, the group of kids is waiting for them. Melanie challenges the leader and fights him. When she defeats him, proving she's the strongest, she protects Parks and Justino and leads them back to safety. Upon returning to the lab, they find the door open. As they enter, Caldwell sedates them with gas. Caldwell tries to pull Melanie towards the slab to do her procedure, but she stops due to intense pain from her hand. While she briefly turns to tend to her injury, Melanie regains consciousness. They talk, and Caldwell tries to persuade Melanie to surrender so she can use her vaccine to save everyone. Melanie almost agrees but asks one final question, whether Caldwell thinks she's truly alive or just mimicking human behavior. Caldwell admits she believes Melanie is alive. Then, Melanie questions why they should sacrifice themselves to save Caldwell. She dashes out, leaving Caldwell alone in the lab. Caldwell follows her, but lags behind without any weapons or protection. She's soon surrounded by the zombie children. Meanwhile, Melanie heads towards the massive fungus they encountered earlier. As Melanie sets the fungus on fire to release the spores, Parks, who had followed her, gets infected. Melanie didn't anticipate this outcome. As Parks begins to turn, he asks Melanie to shoot him before he becomes one of the zombies. Later, Justino wakes up in the lab, shielded from the spores, realizing what happened. Melanie waits for her outside the lab. In the final moments of the film, Justino is awakened by Melanie. Time has passed, and Melanie now leads the zombie children. She conducts a class with them, using a whiteboard, while they listen from the other side of the lab window. Melanie has become their leader, and they all attend Miss Justino's lessons together. And that's the end of the film. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos like this.